Hello and good evening, this is uh, Ruth Pasuelo from Curvel.com and uh, today is time for DAX Fridays again. And we are going to go through the rank x function. And uh, the rank x, what it does is, uh, well, the actual name implies it somehow, but it arranges uh, data based on a criteria that you define. It's a very useful DAX function. So um, without any more delay, let's look at it. So what we have here is the north wind data set that I have actually filtered. So the data is not so complex and it's easier to understand how rank X functions. So what we have is a list of categories that I have filtered out to three. And then we have a list of products, just a few. And then we have a table with uh, sales. So what we're going to do is we want to rank um, this uh, list, the category of products by total sales. So to do that, we go to new measure and then we write category rank and then we use rank x first you need a table uh, and that would be our categories table then we need an expression and for that it will be our total sales total sales just calculates the sales nothing strange the sum of sales and uh, then we can add a value we are not going to do that because if we don't you don't want to add a value you will uh, take the total sales as value and that's exactly what we wanted to do and then we want to order it ascending and that we're not going to go through for now so click on it and then it always ends up in the wrong place we put it there move it to why not we can stay there category rank so let's look how and what it does what it looks like and what it does um so it does what you expect uh, it will give us a rank from low sales to high sales now you probably want to rank number one the one with high sales so to change that we go here and we write zero, that would be descending. So, so now we have high sales number one and then number two, number three. Um, what happens now if we put in category name as a filter and if we choose condiments, as you see, you will keep the rank, seafood number three, dairy number two. But what happens if we choose dairy and seafood? Perhaps the desired result in this case would be that these two would recategorize themselves, right? So it would be dairy products category one and seafood category two instead of three. And to do that, we have to do a small change on the uh, measure that we just created. So if we call it we copy these, new measure, selected. So we want to categorize only the selected items on the list. So the only thing we need to do is to change the all to all selected. You'll see what it does now. You see? So this is quite nice. So if I don't have any filter applied, of course it will be the res same results, but if I choose 
condiments and dairy, it will uh, rank accordingly. Or if we use, or like that, you see? So this is something to keep in mind. What would you like to rank? Would you like to rank everything or would you like to rank only what is visible on the table? And for that you will use all or all select accordingly. Okay, so what happens now if we add product name to our list? So we look at the ranking and we see that uh, the products that have sales get rank one and the products that don't have any sales that are empty they get rank two so the first thing we want to do is to remove the blanks and to do that what we're going to do is add a simple if statement um, let's take that one, create a new measure, uh, we call it without blanks and what we're going to do is just add an if statement so what we're saying here is If total sales is not blank, then do the ranking. Otherwise, remove them from the list. I forgot one. So, and let's see what happens now. We remove, we, we can add it. Doesn't matter, you will see. Uh, so what it does is it remove, it returns blank when it is a blank on total sales. This is exactly what we want. So to make it work, what we need to do is remove category rank, and then we get only a ranking of products and categories that have sales. So this is good. Now, what's happening is one everywhere. Why is that? Well, I think the easiest way to see that is to actually convert it to a matrix. And you will see that you have the category name, condiments, and then you have one, 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 and then you have a total and three and one and two. If you remember, let's do it again. Category name, category rank, a little bit bigger. So this line is filtering by product, right? But our category rank is not filtering by, filtering by product, it's filtering by condiments. So Power BI doesn't, or, or DAX doesn't know exactly what you want it to filter, so it returns one on everything. But when it comes to the total line, where it's actually the condiments line, it returns the actual rank for the condiment, which is three. You see, so this is a product line, one, 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 and then goes to the total that is for the condiments and then it's a three dairy products a one and um, C for two. So what we need to do is instead of having the category um, the rank measure filtering by category we need to have it filtering by product. So we will do that. We're going again to build on this. Create a new measure. And instead of category, we're going to have products rank. And the only thing we need to change is here products. And now let's go back to our list and put our new measure in place. And what's happening now? It is ranking. If we filter by category, you will see that it is ranking correctly. So seafood, we have number one in Lagtsil. Oh, the Swedish, that's fun. Hmm. 
2 uh, caviar and 3 the salmon so it is giving us the product rank by category and product name if we would remove the category name let's do that we can actually remove that so it will give us the product ranking for all the products independent of the category okay so what happens if i now filter by seafood i get uh, the list rank by seafood perfect and then if i select condiments then suddenly it just says one, two, three, four, five, six. Do you remember before when it didn't work that we had to have all select? But we did not write all select in this measure. Let's look at it again. It just says all. But notice here that it says I selected a column name. So it is actually filtering correctly because of that. If I would remove the product, the column name, Let's do a new measure. With column filter. Without. So we remove that. Let's see what happens. So we add our new measure, we remove the old one. And we have exactly the same problem we had before, right? It is not filtering correctly. It just filters correctly with one by not by two because it's also filtering everything that is in the background. We filtering not on a column, but it's filtering on the entire table. So now the question is, can I use the same trick, all select? Okay, let's do that. We create a new one. And this is with all select. And we write here all select. And we put it in and see what happens. It just ranks correctly again. So when you're using rank, you have to be very, very aware of what you're actually filtering. Are you filtering a column? Are you filtering a table? Uh, are you filtering with blanks, without blanks? Uh, do you want ascend and descend? And there's a lot of things to think about. And uh, the best way is to build a formula and the measure and then try it and see how it works. And now you have this file for download for your reference in case you were wondering, okay, how did she do? Mm. So I hope you liked this uh, video. Um, if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, just let me know in the comment box or any of the social channels listed below. If you like it, uh, please let me know by liking it and uh, subscribe. I publish every week great videos about Power BI. Have a great evening. Bye.